Curious Crabs, thanks for joining the Aquarium Online Academy's Winter Kids Club this morning. We are going to have a really great time exploring with two friends that we have here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. And uh, I just want to let you know I'm Stacy, so I'm one of the educators here, and we get this really great chance to hang out with one of my friends from the Ocean Ranger Institute, Captain Joe, and also with a very special guest. So let's go ahead and uh, check in with them and see what's going on. I wonder if they can hear, oh, hi there. Hello, Hello boys, boys and, and girls. girls. Welcome, Welcome to the, to the Aquarium, Aquarium of the Pacific. 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 I'm Captain, Captain Joe of the, of the Ocean, Ocean Ranger. 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 I'm here I'm with here my co-host, co Sea Otter, today, today, today in the Northern, in the Northern Pacific, Pacific Gallery at, at the Aquarium. Aquarium. And we're here, and we're to, here investigate to investigate about, about food, food today, today, Sea Otter. Otter. Now, I, now, do, I know do know that, know that food is one of your favorite things. Sea Otters have a huge appetite. But unfortunately today, Sea Otter, we're not here to eat food. We're here to investigate food. I know. I know. We're going to learn today about how food is prepared for our animals. And also, and also how our, how food, our food is fed, is fed out, out to our, to our animals, animals as well. As well. So sea otter, so let's, let's team, up. team up. You go, you that, go way, that way, find more, more about, about the preparation, the preparation of, the food, of the food, and I'll, and go, I'll this go this way, and I'll find out more about, more about how, that how that food, food is, given is given out to the, to animals. the animals. Ready? Ready? Let's do let's it. Do it. All right, excellent. So it looks like Sea Otter and Captain Joe have a task ahead of them to go investigate a little bit more about how we feed animals here at the aquarium. Now, if you have any questions that come to mind while we do this exploration, I would love it if you sent us a text. The number is right down there. It's 562-286-1838. Or if you're not watching this live, you can even email us, and that's live at lbaop.org. And if you send those in, we'll be able to answer your questions. So I hope that you do send them in. We are also going to be playing a game. And that game, uh, while we wait for Sea Otter and Captain Joe to figure out who to talk to to find out that information, that game is called puzzle time. What we're going to do is actually show you a picture, but we're not showing you the whole picture. You'll see little parts of the picture pop up. And what I want you to do is to make an observation. So I want you to look and I want you to think about what the picture might be. What might be hiding in that picture? And the best way is to look for evidence. So you're going to look for clues of the animal that's in that picture. What do you think it is? All right, now if you do know, we would love for you to text it in too. Now, if you do need to ask for permission, please ask for permission before you send those texts in. All right, I hope you're ready. Let's do this. Wow, okay. Well, there's definitely some parts to the picture here. What do we see? What could it be? Hmm. Well, let's see. I see lots of different kind of colors, right? I see a little bit of like yellow down here. I see red here. Oh, there's some red there. There's some red there and there. And wow, there's an awful lot of red. I wonder if the feature animal here is red. But I do see some, maybe some orange up here. Hmm. Well, if you think you might know what this is, send us that text. Or you can just think about it or say it out loud. Either way, all of those things work. What could this animal be? What are some clues that we see? That's a really interesting question. Hmm, well, looks like we have a red fish as a guess. Great guess, because we definitely see all that red, right? 
We also have a guess of a crab. Shall we find out? Oh, we have Miss Amador's kindergarten class saying it's a crab too. Let's go ahead and see what it is. Ha ha! What is this? It's a crab, my curious crab friends. That's right. So this is a crab. And you know, um, it is a red crab. Now, crabs can come in different colors, but this one is definitely a red crab. What are some things that you noticed that made you think that this was a crab? Oh, great. We have Edward saying claws. Jacob and, um, from Twin Lakes or Twin Lakes Elementary, uh, they saw... They thought that this was a crab too. So great guesses, everybody. This is definitely a crab. So we see some claws here. Do you see the eyes of the crab? There's one there and there's one there. This is where the mouth would be of the crab. So we definitely have a crab here. Excellent, excellent job. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what uh, what's going on. I bet you we've given our friends enough time. I think... Let's check in with sea otter first. Yes? Okay, let's do that. All right, that's, all right, a, great that's a great question. question. First, of first of all, my name is Ron Brunson, and I'm the assistant, assistant creator here for the bird and mammal, mammal group. group. Behind, Behind us, we, us have we have the food prep room. room. This, this is, where is where all, all the food, food for all the animals, animals including, including you, you comes from. Comes from. Alright, see, right, see, I should tell the busy time in the morning. This is food preparation, preparation time. time. Behind, Behind you, you, we have food preparation going on for the fishes. Over here, we have food preparation going on for the sea otters. Anyone interested in that? Yeah. Food preparation going on for the birds. And finally, over here, we have food preparation going on for the seals and the sea lions. We got a lot of food preparation going on in this room. That's the time of day. Absolutely. Alright, see, I should tell the busy time in the morning. This is food preparation time. Behind you, we have food preparation going on for the fishes. Over here, we have food preparation going on for the birds. And finally, over here, Fantastic. There are so many animals that we have to um, prepare food for. We have about 12,000 animals here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and we need to make sure all of them get a very good diet because we want them to be healthy, right? So that food preparation room is incredibly busy because we have to make sure that the food is top quality and also perfect for the animals that we're feeding the food too. In fact, all of the food that we give our animals is restaurant quality. What that means is if you went to a restaurant, it's the same food that we feed the animals here. So they can eat, uh, they eat similar stuff to what we would eat, which is pretty cool. Now let's go see what some of that stuff is and how they prepare it. All right, sea otter. So here we've got food prep going on for all your little otter buddies. We have to divide it up so we know who gets which because each otter gets a little bit different food. You see these are smaller bins. We got larger bins over here. We mix all their food together and then we take it out and we put it into these nice stainless steel bins which we wear on our pouch right here on our hips and when we go in to feed we have our hands free. That works out really well. You can see we have shrimp, we have clams, and we have squid. As a matter of fact, I think I still have some squid I need to cut up. You want to help me? All right, and we just weigh everything out based on what each otter needs, and each one's a little different. So we'll just cut up this squid here. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. This isn't yours. We'll just get this all cut up here. And they can eat whole squid, but the reason we cut it up is because it makes it easier for training. It gives us bite-sized pieces, kind of like popcorn to a sea otter, so that works out really well. Of course, seals and sea lions swallow their food whole, so we can feed them pretty big fish without having to worry about it. But sea otters chew their food. And we're done. We will just put this in the bin. They eat lots of different things like shrimp and clams and squid. That, of course, is sea otter food. And they're very good at chewing because their teeth are perfect for chewing, kind of like our teeth. In fact, their teeth are a lot like our teeth. Now, the sea lions, like Rob was saying, the sea lions, they swallow their food whole. Their teeth look a little different and they don't even have to chew. So they do eat slightly different things. Sea lions eat things like fish. Okay, so it's really interesting that there are different animals and each different kind of animal might have to eat something different. So that's stuff that we would need to know. So we prepare the right amount of food and the right kinds of food for each of them. But wait, amount of food. How do we know? Well, let's check it out. 
probably wondering how to keep it all together and get everything in the right amount of food. The way to do that is by using these dry erase boards. Each one of the animals is listed on there by name and also by color. Their color corresponds to their bucket. They have a little tag on there, so we always know, for instance, Shelby always has the bucket with the tag. Blue is their color. It's also the shape in the case of the animals so that we can get the shape and get them to come to us wherever we're at in the exhibit. Excellent. Okay, so we have a couple questions that came in here. How many pounds a day do the otters uh, have to eat? And so an otter uses its food as fuel, just like us, right? When we eat food, we get lots and lots of energy. But otters need energy to uh, swim around and all of that. But they also need the energy to stay warm because the water they live in is kind of chilly. So they have to eat a lot of food. They eat, let's see, our otters are about 60 pounds or so. Like that's how much an otter weighs. So the amount of food they eat is about 15 pounds of food a day. That's crazy. Now, for those of you who understand percentages, that's about 25% of their body uh, body weight every day. So it's a ton of food. It means that our husbandry staff, the folks who care for our animals, are very, very busy with pre uh, preparing that food. And, you know, we actually have another question here, too. How many ocean chefs work at the aquarium? Well, our ocean chefs are actually the folks who take care of them day to day. So they are the folks who have to prepare the food. They feed the food out. They uh, clean up after the animal. They have to clean the water. So um, those folks are, are very, very busy. And we have quite a few of the, uh, those husbandry staff members here. We also have some volunteers who help us with all that work because it is so much work to take care of all those animals. So fantastic question. All right. So I think that uh, we learned a lot about what uh, what it go what goes into actually putting the food together, right? But what about feeding that food out? I think Captain Joe was going to investigate that. So let's go ahead and see what what Captain Joe has found out. Welcome, Welcome back, back, boys, boys and girls. girls. We're, We're here investigating, investigating how we feed our fish in the aquarium. aquarium. Excellent. Um, but why are you in a wetsuit? Well, well. While I, While was, I was investigating, I, I found out that we have scuba, scuba divers, divers that help us feed, feed all, all of our animals. animals. And to, make, and to sure make sure that all, all of the animals, animals are getting, are getting fed, fed in our large exhibits, exhibits like this like big, big, big one behind me, me they, actually they actually get inside, inside of the water and help feed all of the, all of the animals. animals. That's fantastic. You actually go into the water to feed some of the animals. Now, not all of our animals get fed from inside the water, but um, I bet you they're going to have to use some kind of tools to help them out, whether they're out of the water or in the water. Let's see if Captain Joe knows more about the tools that we use. Here are, Here some, are of some of the tools, tools that, that our scuba, scuba divers, divers use while feeding, while feeding our, animals. our animals. This right, this right here, here is a feeding bucket. bucket. We'll use, we'll use these on our larger animals here at the aquarium, aquarium, like our rays or our Queensland, Queensland grouper. grouper. And, the and the divers will get right, right inside, inside the water and feed them right, right from this bucket. bucket. It is very, very, very cool to see. Now, our, now, our smaller, smaller animals, animals believe, it, believe or not, it or not, some of them, some of them love, love vegetables, vegetables, broccoli, broccoli lettuce, lettuce, and the, and others, the others, they like, they like very small, small worms, worms that we can, that we can actually squirt inside, squirt inside the, cracks the cracks in our coral. They love, they love trying, trying to get, to get them. at them. Now, now this, this is very, very cool. These are, these are grabbers. grabbers. Our diamonds, our diamonds will use these at the surface, surface to feed, to feed animals, animals like sharks and our sea turtle. Now, boys, now and boys and girls, we've, we've learned, learned a lot on the observations we've made, made here in our tropical gallery. gallery. I think what, I think we, what should we should do is go meet back, back up with Sea Otter. Excellent. I think that's a really good idea. We should probably check in with Sea Otter because she was so close to all that delicious, delicious otter food. So uh, let's see what Sea Otter's up to. Oh, Sea Otter, she sure looks hungry. Oh, my goodness. She was even rubbing her belly. I wonder what... Sea otter? Here's your food right here. You can see your little bit of 
Excellent. So it's a good thing that we checked in on Sea Otter. It looks like she was going to go in for her tasty snack before it was actually time for lunch. Oh, man. She is a hungry, hungry little one. I, I understand. I like my snacks, too. All right. So it's good that we checked in on her. But you know what? The work in the kitchen is not done yet. So the food is prepared, but they still have more to do. Let's see what Rob now has to do now. Now we have to do the most important step. step. We, have we have to clean, clean the, kitchen. the kitchen. Just like, Just any, like any restaurant, restaurant, restaurant hospital, hospital, we use stainless, we use stainless, stainless steel, 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 so it's really, really easy clean. to clean. We even, we even use stainless, stainless steel, steel scrub, scrub pads, pads and lots, lots and lots of soap. Hot water and a little elbow grease and the kitchen will be all sparkly and new. That's funny. He said elbow grease. I think what he meant there is you have to really scrub because you want to make sure that the kitchen is super, super clean. In fact, it's really important. Every single day, our staff not only prepares the food for our animals, but they have to clean up and they clean all of the surfaces really, really well to make sure that everything stays really healthy for the animals that we're making food for. So it's very, very important uh, what we do there. Now, this is an interesting photo. Um, let's see what's going on. Oh, it's actually a video. I see the diver in the water there. <gasps> Whoa, what's happening? Excellent. What a neat view. So that was really cool. What we saw there, just like Captain Joe was saying, you have to go sometimes into the water in order to feed the animals, right? And that's exactly what happened. So we have our scuba diver here. Here's that tool he was talking about, that bucket. And look at that. In our diver's hand is a squid. And there's our ray. Now this time we can use the hand just to Put the food underneath the ray's face there. Now, did you notice that this is the bottom of the ray? So on the bottom of the ray is where their mouth is. So their food has to go underneath. Now, typically, a ray like this is going to get its food on the bottom of the ocean. But we've actually trained some of our rays, like the one that you see here, to eat on the window. So we can actually watch them sucking in the food in their cute little mouths there. <laughs> Excellent. Now, uh, it looks like we have a couple other questions coming in here. Uh, so let's go ahead and answer those. Now, if you do have more questions, let's put up that number again, just to make sure that you have it um, in case you want to text in some more of your questions. So we have Daniel asking, how do you know when a penguin is sick? That's a really good question because our animals can't just tell us, right? They don't say, oh, I'm not feeling so good. So our staff actually has to be really good good at knowing their animals. One of the things that's really important that they do every single day is actually watch the animals to make sure that they're behaving normally. So this time of year, our penguins spend a lot of time in the water. It's because this time of year is considered their migration season. So typically you would find them swimming a whole lot in the water. So we have our penguins here in the water. So this is good behavior. It means that they're acting normal. Now, if we had a, a penguin who wasn't going in the water at all, maybe for a whole day or even two days, we know something's not right. That's not their normal behavior. So that's when we go and uh, check them out to make sure that they're doing okay. Another thing that we can do, I'm going to step off the screen so you can see our little cute penguin bellies there. Um, another thing that we do is we look at how they're eating. So each of these animals actually gets a certain amount of food. And if they're not eating enough, then we know maybe there's something wrong there too, or maybe they're not interested in food at all. In a lot of ways, for any of you who have pets at home, it's very, very similar. Like my dogs, they can't tell me they're not feeling good, but instead they maybe don't eat as much, or maybe they're just sleeping a lot and they don't want to play as much. So that's really, really similar. That's how you can tell when an animal is not feeling good. So great question, Daniel. Um, in fact, we're actually going to be visiting our Molina Animal Care Center. Our Molina Animal Care Center, uh, this is what it looks like on the outside. This is our veterinary hospital. So basically this is where our animals go to see the doctor. 
for our veterinarian. All right, so uh, we'll get a chance to kind of see what happens inside there in just a little bit. But let's keep answering your questions. Santiago asks, do otters fight over food or do they take turns having lunch? That's a great question. Well, the way that we feed our otters makes it so they don't fight over food because we don't want them to fight over food. We want everybody to get just the right amount of food so they stay healthy. So um, do you remember seeing those little um, containers? They're, they were silver, kind of shiny, like cups or buckets. Um, so their food goes in there and that food is for only one otter. And then we have their, um, their trainers, okay, the mammologists. They go in and each person has a bucket and they call the otter over and that otter gets all the food from that bucket. So we have lots of trainers in there so that way each otter has their own trainer. Some trainers can take two otters, depends on, on what they're doing. But uh, that way otters are all getting fed and they all get the right amount of food and they don't have to fight over the food. I think if we all of the food, throw it inside their exhibit, and walk away, it's possible they might because they all get very, very hungry as you saw sea otter a little bit earlier. All right, we have, let's see, we have since sea otters live in salt water, where do they get their water to survive um, like all living creatures? Good question, because they can't just drink the seawater, right? Seawater is very salty, and animals that just drink seawater usually uh, have to have special things that help them to get rid of that salt. Sea otters don't have those things. So a sea otter gets their fresh water instead of going um, onto land to drink. They actually get their fresh water from the food that they eat. So that's one of the reasons why squid is really, really important because squid has a lot of water in their body and not just the seawater, but their body has a lot of kind of like juice to it. Um, and so when the sea otter eats the squid, they're actually getting that fresh water. Now here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we also give our otters ice and the otters really like the ice. They use the ice for a couple of things. They'll eat the ice and that's one way to get the fresh water, but they also use the ice for grooming, which means they take ice and they rub it on their bodies. And it's almost like using it like a sponge to clean off the uh, extra food particles and the salt that uh, they get from being in the water there. We have Sophia asking, do otters eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Oh my goodness, Sophia. They eat breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner. Usually we feed our otters like four times a day, and sometimes they'll even get little snacks in between just to keep them full. So they eat a lot of food. Yeah, totally. And then how many times do otters eat? Oh, we answered that question. All right, excellent. And then what else do otters eat? That's a fantastic question. So here at the aquarium, we typically will feed them the squid, clam, and shrimp, right? We saw that being prepared. Um, but we will also feed them other things like clams uh, because they would normally eat clams out in the ocean. Sometimes when they're really lucky, they get crabs and mussels. So they eat lots of different things here at the aquarium. Now out in the ocean, they eat all of those things and more. Uh, they'll even eat snails um, and lots of things that you'll find kind of on the bottom of the ocean. Now, has anybody here ever heard of an animal called a sea urchin? A sea urchin is an animal that is like a ball with tons of spikes. And those sea urchins are really tough for animals to eat. But sea otters are so clever, they're so smart, they've actually figured out a way to get past all those spikes to eat the delicious inside. So that's another thing that sea otters eat. Now here, we don't feed them too many sea urchins, but in the ocean, some otters eat so many sea urchins because it's their favorite food. They'll eat so many sea urchins and the sea urchins are purple, that their teeth turn purple. It's wild. All right, so great question about some sea otters here. Oh, there we go, excellent. That is what a sea urchin looks like. See, it's a, it's a spiky purple ball there. And those sea otters are smart enough to be able to crack it open and eat the inside, which is the delicious part. That's the part where you get the nutrition. Um, you, don't, you can't really eat those spikes. Those spikes don't really do much for you. All right, let's see. We have Aiden asking, does the aquarium have any baby stingrays? Aiden, we do have some baby stingrays. And every so often we do have some baby stingrays um, that 
are born here which is really fun. A lot of times those baby stingrays look a whole lot like their parents though. In fact, it kind of looks like somebody uh, took their parents and just whoop, shrunk them down to be little. And that's what those baby stingrays look like. And how many baby animals are born here at the aquarium? Well, that changes all of the time. Um, so we have not as many of our big animals born here. Oh, here we go. The very cute little baby stingray. Looks just like its, uh, its parents. So um, here at the aquarium, we have um, lots of animals being born, not necessarily stingrays and sharks and seals and sea lions and otters though. We don't get too many of those. Instead, we have lots of little fish that are born all the time. And we even have jellies. And I don't know if you want to call them born or hatched. It probably depends on if they come from an egg or not. So good question there. How deep do otters dive to get food? They usually dive pretty shallow because where they live, it's not super, super deep, but they can go up to 250 feet deep. So that's a fantastic diver and they have to hold their breath quite a long time. But since they eat stuff on the bottom of the ocean, they have to dive to wherever the bottom of the ocean is. Luckily, most of them don't have to dive too far because they live in a more shallow area. And then how do otters eat their food when it's in a shell? Great question. Otters use tools. They're so smart. In fact, uh, sometimes they'll use a rock that's very hard, right? Because rocks are hard, but kind of flat. They'll lay on their back, so they're floating on their back with a rock on their chest, and they take the shell and they slam the shell up against the rock until the shell cracks. And then they're able to get the squishy inside, which is really what they're after. So good question there. We have Amory asking, do otters get fat because they eat so much? They don't. They don't because they have to use all of that food energy just to survive. Remember earlier we said that they live in the cold, right? So they live in some pretty chilly waters. And living in those chilly waters means they have to stay warm. Now, when we get cold, we can put a jacket on. They can't do that. They have great fur to help keep them warm, but they can't just put on more clothes. So another way we stay warm is we run around, right? If we do this a whole lot, we get really warm. Same thing with otters. When they move a lot, then they can stay warm too. So, um, so that's a great way for otters to stay warm, but they need to eat food to get the energy to move all the time. They also need that food energy just to get their bodies to warm up. So, uh, so they don't even get fat. They're very, very thin and slim, um, but they eat a ton. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's see, we have Ms. Mrs. Morales class asking, how long does it take to feed the animals underwater? Um, unbelievably, it's really quite quick. And that's because we have a team of people who go into the water in order to feed them. Now, one of our biggest exhibits here, actually it is our biggest exhibit here, is called our Tropical Reef Exhibit. And it's 350,000 gallons of water. We have um, over a thousand uh, animals that live inside there. And it kind of looks like an orchestrated ballet. Uh, we have people who are at the top, um, above the water surface, who are feeding some of our animals, like some of our rays and our sharks. And then we have divers who go into the water in different parts of the water here to, um, to feed the different animals in here. So it usually takes us about 15 minutes, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, maybe a little bit longer in order to feed all of the animals in this one exhibit. Now, to feed all of the animals here at the aquarium, it basically takes a day. So, so uh, yes, it does take quite a while because we have so many animals here. We have Ms. Amador's class asking, um, oh, they learned that out in the ocean, the otter will still will eat a sea star sandwich. Oh my gosh, Ms. Amador's class. Fantastic. Yes. Another animal that uh, otters can eat are sea stars. But sea stars on the bottom have lots of little sticky feet like suction cups. And so if you held onto it, they could stick on their paws and otters don't like that. But they have discovered if you take two sea stars and you put them together, they stick to each other. And then you make kind of like a sea star sandwich. So excellent, thank you for sharing that. Um, does the aquarium feed sea, uh, feed the otter sea stars. We actually don't. There's not a ton of food to a sea star. So instead we feed them other things that are a little bit more nutrition. They nutritious. They get more stuff from that. All right. I think we are running out of time here, but let's get one last question. Where do otters sleep?
Well, otters live, sea otters live in the ocean and they have to stay out in the ocean basically their whole life. They don't really come onto land. So sea otters will often find a um, kelp, which is a kind of seaweed that's pretty sturdy. And they'll roll themselves up in kelp and float on the surface of the water to sleep. Now, part of the reason why they'll roll themselves up in kelp is because, number one, the kelp, that seaweed, is anchored down to the bottom of the ocean. So the otter doesn't just float away because the ocean is moving all the time, even when otters are sleeping. But the other thing is, it's a great way to camouflage. If you cover yourself in kelp, then you look like kelp and predators won't be able to find you quite as easily. So that is how otters sleep. They actually sleep out in the ocean and they float there and sleep. Now they have to float because they have to breathe air. So that's a great way to get some really well needed rest. All right, everybody. Well, it looks like we've actually run out of time. Thank you so much for all of your otter questions. I think it was really cool for us to be able to uh, learn about feeding the animals here at the aquarium from our two friends, Captain Joe and Sea Otter. I wonder if they're around for us to, to say bye to. Let's see. Oh, there they are. Bye, friends. All right. Thank you so much, Curious Crowds, for joining us today. And I hope we see you again soon. Bye.